So let's talk about the stock market for a moment because, you know, it began a really strong stealth rally off those March and April lows. But, well, last week, all the major indices, which were right in the shadow of record milestones, uh, but there's an inability to break out, and as a consequence, it's resulting in four days, consecutive days of losses. Now, I'll tell you right now, it is not unusual for a stock or an index to actually to see such a pullback after repeated failure to break out. But it does raise some questions. Now, for me, uh, one of the biggest concerns is the continued disappointment of financials. Over the past three months, the S&P 500 has edged up more than 4%. The financials have been the second worst performer after energy. In today's session, the hardest hit financials were the big banks. Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, Bank of New York, Citigroup, JP Morgan, all down again. Now, I think part of the problem, of course, is that these big banks moved away from good old fashioned lending, right? Remember that? Banking 101? In fact, a long time ago, they started to favor these gimmicks and, of course, shady products. Now, I don't think the situation in Turkey or other exogenous events actually are pressuring U.S. banks right now. I don't see the contagion reaching that far. And if I'm right, that does mean a part of the current woes could be a byproduct of macroeconomic issues in this country, like mounting debt and growing defaults. But I will say right now, neither are at levels that should derail this economy, but they are flashing signals that, that could give the market pause, particularly these, these stocks we're talking about. Now, from a technical point of view, uh, investors should focus on the S&P 500 because it's made a series of higher highs and higher lows, and it's holding well above its 50-day moving average right now. Now, the thing is, it's, it's the, the index is actually looking even cheaper right now after most, the most recent earnings period. I mean, we had what is an amazing earnings r report uh, in the last three, three, four weeks. So it's not unreasonable that the challenge right now to reach a record high uh, it's there, right? I think that it's a test. It's always a test to create these new milestones. And I think when it does happen, it might happen with very little fanfare. Now, of course, that being said, Home Depot, all eyes will be on that stock tomorrow. They report before the open. According to research from E-Trade, they covered the last 54 earnings reports, and Home Depot actually has traded lower in the pre-open and subsequent sessions than a majority of the time. So maybe it won't be a broad market savior that some are hoping for. But I will say the fact is, is that, uh, again, this was a, er a monster earnings period. So if the knee jerk uh, is going to be uh, reactions will be, you know, sort of that the market moves sideways when we thought that the market should be stratospheric, don't worry about it. Maybe it's a reason for anxiety, but it should not be. Investors need to stay focused on fundamentals and underlying earnings news. Uh, and I tell you, we know going into the rest of the week, it's going to really be important because we need to see the bolster of the value proposition. Uh, for example, we're going to see a lot of brick and mortar names uh, report and think, keep this in mind. They have made some great rallies without any fanfare. Uh, and that means they're going to have to post huge beats. Macy's is up 132 percent over its 52 week low. Dillard's is up 151 percent over its 52 week low. Nordstrom's is up 39 percent over its 52 week low. So when these companies report this week, they can't just beat. They have to crush.